Grizz Nation, welcome in. We are practicing our social distancing and getting to catch up with Travis DeKir for the first time in quite a while, Coach. Uh, the last month has just been completely crazy. We'll get into how Boise ended up, how the team's looking now. But first and foremost, how are you doing? Where are you at currently? And how are you and your family throughout the, all of this craziness going on right now? I'm doing well. Uh, a little bored considering you know, how we've got to go about our day of business and, and things like that, but enjoying some time with the family that I typically wouldn't have. Um, right now, currently in Kent, Washington, um, all under one roof, safe, sound, and uh, passing the time. Beautiful day there, certainly looks like it. Uh, Coach, let's go back to the day. It was March 12th, it was in Boise, and of course, we're all going to remember it vividly now because of what happened. But just maybe take me back to what you remember throughout that day. I remember sitting in the film session with you guys. We even did the pregame interview. You're going to the arena, and then all of a sudden, pandemonium. So just take me back to what you remember from, from the day everything kind of shifted. Uh, it was really a, a, a crazy 12 hours lead up to that, really. Um, you know, the night before the NBA canceled a couple games. Um, and you could see one thing lead to another and start to snowball. We get up that morning, uh, up early as usual, cup of coffee, uh, beat everyone to the film room, you know, with an hour to kind of prepare my my speech. It's, it's more like, um, you know, uh, you, you're, giving, you're, you're, you're giving an essay than it is, you know, X's and O's sometimes. But just kind of preparing for my team meeting. And you're seeing on ESPN, um, tournament game canceled, tournament game canceled postponed, postponed, postponed. And before we even got to do the pregame radio, I think there were only us and one other tournament still alive. And so we just, you know, trying to stay as confident as possible, as focused as possible, continue to prepare and hoping that we can at least get one game under our belt. How tough was it to address your team? And if you can, tell us kind of how, who you got the phone call from that everything was going to cancel and then maybe the process just to, to talk to your team because you're, you're always a guy that's prepared, Coach, for every situation. That's one you can't really prepare for. Right. And, you know, the night before I made a couple phone calls to the conference, just, you know, what are your thoughts? My family was getting on – they were getting on flights. I had flight, you know, people coming in 6, 7, 8 o'clock the night before uh, thinking I had one last chance to communicate and, and maybe tell some people to stay. Um, the conference was very confident that we would get through with the tournament. So – Everyone jumped on their plane. Um, that evening, after the NBA stuff took place, I made a couple more calls and still confident, you know. Uh, so I'm thinking, hey, you know, maybe we're one of a couple conferences that actually can get a couple days in under our belts. And, um, you know, that morning, um, the team was a little unfocused, just kind of feeling like maybe this isn't going to happen. Um, but they were excited to play ball. So we, we moved forward with our pregame routine. And uh, by the time we get to the gym, I had made a couple phone calls that hadn't gotten answered. And uh, Seth Bodner is the one to make the phone call and let me know where we were. Unbelievable stuff. And you feel for every member of the team, coach, both staff and players, but the seniors in particular, your three that – uh, unfortunately just had their season their careers just in so abruptly I, what can you say just about how it all ended for them the emotions maybe a little bit different for them being it, that it was their last hurrah you know that part is still a little foggy for me um you never want to end a season the way we ended the season you, you know if you figured the last time we were on the floor together it was practice um and so that day, when we found out the game was canceled, we got back on the bus, we go back to the hotel and we meet briefly with the team. We really don't have any information. We don't, we, is this postponed? Is there still a chance that maybe we can jump into our postseason tournaments? Um, maybe, you know, the, the conference champion moves on to the NCAA tournament and everyone else kind of tries to figure another way. Um, and so I left it open-ended with the team. Um, there also the conversation of seniors being able to return started to take place. And so you don't want to close the door on the guys. Um, you know, you want to keep the faith. And so we did that. And within 24 hours, NC2 tournaments canceled. Guys are on flights home as opposed to to Missoula. Um, and it just became a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations from that point to have closure to the season 
uh, it was still another week or two before I was able to close the careers of our seniors. And it's been over a month since this has all happened, but let's go back in hindsight. How did you feel about your team's chances going into the tournament? And I know it was, it was maybe a bit of a shaky rough patch, of course, of the final weekend going in, Coach, but there was a quiet confidence around your group, maybe even that pressure got alleviated from not being so much on your back. Just kind of take us through maybe what you thought your chances were going in with a good draw, Idaho State having to play them first. Well, I, I think style of play has a lot to do with who's successful in tournaments and who's not. And, you know, to win three games in three nights, you got to play percentage basketball. Teams that let it fly from three for more than half of their shots tend to struggle. Uh, one of those nights and teams that attack the rim and defend percentagely typically have an opportunity to win three in a row. And so I felt, one, we were built to win. I, I felt, two, even though we had lost two consecutive games going in, we had their attention. Uh, we were on a clean slate, a lot like how we started conference. Uh, our mojo was there. Everyone was on the same page. Um, I, I felt, you know, the dominoes were starting to, to, to fall in our direction, and we were excited to go perform. As we close part one here with one more question, part two will kind of go into the future, how you and your staff and the players are all communicating. But as we put a bow here on part one, Coach, how would you best sum up the entire year? It was a year that you went in with a lot of question marks, and we all know the fateful game in November that maybe changed expectations a little bit with Montana Tech, and then you guys went a completely different direction, and we're at the top of the league for the majority of the season. So how would you best, now that you've had time to really reflect on it, to an 18-win season, how would you best sum up this year? Well, that, I mean, I might need some time to research that question and answer that. That's a hard one, really, to be honest with you. I, I think the reality for us is that we had a successful season with so much youth on the floor, so much inexperience, so many guys in new roles um, that, you know, we had injuries. We started the season off with two injuries. Timmy Falls had a broken hand. Jared Samuelson had knee surgery. Uh, took a little longer to recover from that surgery than we thought going into it. Um, and so when you look up and you play a non-conference probably tougher than we've ever had with basically five scholarships sitting on the bench watching, um, I thought we competed at a very high level considering. Um, I think that the success we had prior uh, set a new standard, a new expectation for our program, uh, one that is hard to sustain, hard to reach in consecutive seasons. Um, and so I think reality slapped us all across the face, not only our staff, but our players. I, I think they came to win championships. And sometimes when you come to win championships and it's happened for you or before you got there, you feel like because you're there, it's going to keep happening. Um, and the same thing for our fans. I think they just got used to us putting a, a, a polished product on the floor and we weren't polished. Um, and so it was a struggle early for us to create an identity. Um, to create a hunger that I didn't feel existed, and then also create some chemistry and depth that would allow us to be successful over a period of time. It was January before we got to that point. Um, and by that time, I think a lot of people, the reality um, set in for enough people to relieve the pressure that our guys were feeling going into the season. They had nothing to lose. And uh, they went out and performed early and regained the preseason confidence we had before we started playing games. And then we became the team that we knew we were capable of. Um, we hit March, and I just feel like we ran out of gas. When you've got three guys carrying the load offensively uh, and you play defense the way we play defense, you, you just can't afford to have Saeed Bridget have one game without going into double figures. You, you can't afford to have... Kendall Manuel not shoot 50% one night or not make all of his free throws one night. Um, there was just so little room for, for slippage or error that it caught up with us at the end. Um, but I still would like to finish it out because I think there might have been an incredible success story when it all was said and done. It was a magical ride from start to finish. Grizzlies with 18 wins, top of the league pretty much the entire year. Stay tuned. There is part two coming up as we social distance here with Travis DeCure and Grizzly basketball.